Let's drop a couple gears. Go to this turn. Welcome back to another episode of JF Vlogs. You see me in a little bit of a different environment today. I've always wanted to do like drive and talk episodes where we kind of discuss things that are going on like in the automotive industry. Hold up, let me get around this dude. Um, yeah, just kind of cover topics that you guys are interested in, um, that I'm interested in. But today, I want to talk about the Golf R. Why, Jake, why did you pick the Golf R? Like, out of all these choices, you pick the Golf. Like, guys, the Golf R ticks all the boxes. It's like, if you could just get one car, like, this would be a very good like choice for you to consider there's a bunch of reasons i could point some out right now this car has a double clutch gearbox um a lot of cars in this price range do not have a double clutch gearbox I, i'm not sure why um double clutches are starting to phase out but i love double clutch and a lot of other manufacturers in this price range are doing stick shift or that's it like you have the focus rs that's just stick shift you have the civic type r that's just stick shift um another easy 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 reason why i got this car active suspension it's basically like PASM, which is porsche active suspension management for a porsche but for a volkswagen audi porsche and volkswagen are i wouldn't say they're basically the same but they take all of their technology like it's it goes all into Volkswagen and Audi and a lot of people do not know that and that's why they think oh Volkswagen they make fun of me and whatever they don't know what they're talking about so basically this is a mini Audi or mini Porsche um put it like this this chassis is the S3 chassis it's the RS3 chassis as well. Um, it's a very nimble chassis, great chassis. Like I said, shared between all three manufacturers, except Porsche, two actually, but all the technology is all combined into this car. This interior quality is like just beautiful. The stitching, the leather, like there's Napa leather on the steering wheel, like just, I don't know how they priced this car for what they price it, but they did, and I hopped on that because, like, it's, I don't know, it just was such an easy choice for me, and a lot of people don't seem to understand this car's, like, capability. Like, it looks like just a little baby, like, rabbit. They call it the Rabbit R, or the Golf R, or whatever. This thing is insanely quick. It's got the double clutch gearbox, 300 pounds feet of torque, 300 horsepower. It's, it's like instant. Like just listen to these shifts. Like how? Like why is the double clutch phasing? Like I don't know. Like all right, supposedly, supposedly. I'm not sure. This might just be from one person I heard, but I'm hearing this gearbox is rough when you come to a stop okay yes first gear is a little bit um clunky i guess is a good word but if you're buying this car you you're gonna know how to drive it like when i come off of a red light or from a stop i'm always easy in first gear and then i let the revs go up wind up a little bit shift in the second um i, I just i don't see like why it's such a big issue um i'm scared that porsche i'm a huge porsche fan by the way i'm scared that porsche is going to phase out of the double clutch as well um we see it in the cayenne coupe the new cayenne coupe that came out that now has an eight speed tiptronic triptonic something like that tiptronic i believe um it's kind of like the eight speed zf a little bit sharper shifts it comes out of like the audi rs5 Audi RS3, R6 Avant, cars like that. Um, not R6 Avant, sorry. Um, we don't get those. Oh man, don't even get me started on that. I would love 
to have an RS6 Avant. Like, the hatch, like, 600 pounds feet of torque, all-wheel drive, that'd be the perfect daily. But for this, this car is the perfect daily. Like, I would recommend anyone to get this car if they're within this price range. Um, it's just, it's stupid quick too. Like, this thing just thrusts you back in your seat and it just shifts instantly, instantaneous. That's a great sound. I'm not sure if you guys can hear it. Um, I don't know if I want to tell you this, but this car does have sound pumped in from the speakers, if I'm correct. Um, I was a little bit against it at first, but it's like, I don't know. I mean, it sounds really good. And most of it is the exhaust, because this car does have active exhaust. But even if it is, even if it isn't, I don't care. It's, it's, it makes it fun and it just makes the experience so much better. Like, I'm not against what the future holds. Um, like, it's gonna come. Like, there's no reason why we should pout about it and cry and be like, oh, like, this is stupid for like enthusiasts like yeah it is but I mean what are you gonna do like there's nothing that we can do about it anyways I'm actually coming up to this little turn right here shifts are instant just corners beautifully with that active suspension up through the gears fifth sixth little zero to 20 acceleration for you just blows my mind this car blows my mind my previous car the 10 series Scion FRS um, for those of you who don't know about that car that car was a turbo car I turboed it I built it I did a couple of transmission parts um, had a horrible experience with that car bad taste in my mouth like as far as modifying sorry as far as modifying cars go because that car was just a mess like I go to school I I have to I am I'm, I'm busy I have to go places I can't worry about tuning in in the transmission and all that nonsense you guys this car has none of that it's German engineering like it's that simple that's all I need to tell you. it's German engineering now, the Britons, or British, they make great cars as well. I mean, McLaren. But they're taking all this, like, technology from the Germans. Like, if I were to sit in a McLaren and you didn't tell me that it was British, I would probably just assume that it's a German car. It's very composed interior. Everything's beautiful inside. But back to the FRS. The Japanese-made cars are just... They're not what they plan, like they seem to be, that people make them seem to be. I could see if you loved like that look and that like tuner look and all that, but as far as driving goes, if you want a car that can really drive, that you can push, you have to go German. You just have to. Now, that car did not have all wheel drive. I'd always been into spinning the tires and drifting and all of that fun stuff. But when I got this Golf R, I was, I completely like changed my mindset. Like, it's just anywhere, like in the rain, like pouring down raining. Like I'm telling you, people on the interstate, they're like putting around with their front wheel drive, rear wheel drive cars. This thing just cuts through the water and you can give it as much power as you want at like any speed. Like from a dig like this thing just goes 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 no wheel spin whatsoever like just you just get on it like and it just goes like it's just it, it puts a smile on your face like yes this car isn't like crazy loud it's not like in your face but it's just it's an amazing car like it ticks all the right boxes, all of them, at least for a daily. Now, let's move on to kind of what I self, 
well, what I see myself doing in the future as far as cars. I know you guys watched the previous video, um, thought about getting rid of the Golf R, but I don't know, thinking more about it, I'd like to kind of have this and then have another car, which my three choices were, this is the funny part. They were the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio, the C63S Mercedes, obviously AMG, and the BMW M3. But now it's like, do I just get a Cayman? Like, dual clutch, handles amazing. The only thing is, it doesn't have all the power that I want. Like, I feel like if I were to get a, another car, like a weekend car, I'd want it to be crazy and not composed. But then again, I've always wanted a Porsche. Like, what also scares me though, I raced the Cayman GTS and like, I was like a bumper ahead of him, like all the way until like fourth gear. Like this car is basically just as quick as a Cayman S, Cayman, Cayman GTS. So would that really excite me? Like as not being a daily driver, like just going out and driving or is this the Cayman GTS? Like this does everything that that car does. Um, it's got the transmission. It's got the active suspension. It's got the active exhaust. It's got nice leather everywhere. It handles beautifully. Would that be having like two cars and like the two like same cars in the garage or would that be a little bit different? So a lot of people wonder like, why don't you like muscle cars and like American made cars? I mean, don't get me wrong, they're cool, they have their own niche. I guess that's the perfect way I could put it. Like, those are fun if you like crazy amounts of torque and you have all that emotion but you don't have the like instant acceleration. It's like a lot of drama um, with still not like picking up pace like crazy quick. But <clears throat> I don't know. I mean. Yes, the ZL1, the ZR1, those are like track beasts. Like, I would not mind having one of those whatsoever. But it's just, I'm not gonna go get one. Like, it's it's not me. Like, I just, I tell you guys, it's just not me. And just stuff rattles and I don't, I don't like any of that. But, and they can't do this. They can't go through turns crazy quick like this. You just drop a gear, DSG, can't get that in a muscle car instant shifts those cars like the Hellcat they have the ZF8 speed they don't shift as quick um, they don't grip as well the weight like the power to weight ratio isn't as good like nothing stacks up to a German car and yes people might say <clears throat> well I don't have the funds to go get something German over an American I mean you say that but even just like, I go back to the Golf. I could just go back to it every time. Um, just get a Golf GTI. Like, yeah, you might not be the coolest kid around town, like, at the lakefront here in New Orleans, but who cares? Like, it's how the car makes you feel. Like, people probably laugh at me. I mean, they, they don't, but if people were to laugh at me and be like, that car looks like a girl's car, I'd be like, yeah, you want to go for a ride in it? Like, let's go tear up the canyons and you can bring your ZL1 and show me off, right? Another thing I love about this car and just every German-made car, um, these gauges right here. Like, I could just go through and customize them. I could change the oil temperature to <clears throat> G-forces. I see I have 270, 70, sorry, 270 miles till empty. I'm averaging 21.7 miles per gallon. What gear I'm in, my revs, um, fuel, mileage, so on and so forth. It's so much like, there is so much customization you can like do to this. And I can like, I don't have to look anywhere else like down here, up here to see what I need to see while I'm driving, while I'm going through turns, while I'm hammering the gas. Um, <clears throat> It just, they make sense. Like, 
it's just I, there's no other way I can put it. Now, it doesn't have the actual needle on the gauges, which I am a big fan of. Um, but I feel like the only one I really like is like the Porsche. Um, yeah, I'm spoiled. Like their gauges and like the Sport Chrono clock, they're just so precise. Like when you shift, like yes, they're both DSG cars, like this and let's just say a GT3. But to see that like real life needle like just pop back and forth is like it just gives you goosebumps like this one it's electronic but it's still like pop, pop, pop. like the shift time is practically like just as quick there might be a little bit of tuning in the pdk that the dsg doesn't have um but you're not gonna tell unless you're like crazy like me now, aside from the performance specs and performance talk that I'm kind of going through, um, it's that simple to just put it in auto, just like that, go to mode, put this car in normal, well, my custom mode. Yes, we do have eco, comfort, normal, race, and custom. Custom, you can kind of, like, say you want the steering in normal, because you don't want it too floaty, but you want the suspension and comfort, you can go through and adjust um, as you please. Right now, I'm in normal. It softens the suspension, quiets the exhaust, lightens up the steering just a little bit, and this is your perfect commute car. Um, it's got heated seats. It's got dual climate control. You have a friend, he's cold, you're hot, go for it, man, go for it. Um, heated side mirrors yes heated side mirrors best thing in the world you think you never need them but like when I wake up and I head to college I'm like I need that and I use them like all the time now the only thing is I wish it would pop back because I go to turn it and like I put it off well I put it on and I forget and like Two days later, I'll look and I'm like, oh, that's why they're so clean. <laughs> I'm sorry if I bored you guys. Back in the race for sure. Let's go. Left it in auto there. Auto is just as good. Like, I'm going into manual though. I'll talk about auto for a second. It's like, it knows what you want to do. Like, sometimes if I'm like, just cutting through, um, and I don't want to have to think about what gear I'm in. I'm really focused on driving and kind of getting to where I want to go. Um, I just point the car and it shifts for me. Like it knows exactly when to shift and like what gear to be in. Um, especially going through turns like this. I mean, I'm shifting right now, but I feel like if I think and I'm like, all right, I want you to be in second gear. It like listens to me. Like this car adapts to how you drive, believe it or not. Like, if you drive it hard all the time, it'll want to drive hard. If you drive it soft, it kind of relaxes the transmission. And I don't know if I'm just crazy, but I've heard that about, like, German cars, especially the Golf R. Um, Uh-oh, he's coming into my lane. <laughs> oh, this car is great. It's just... You can do anything with it, like... Oh, speaking of doing anything with it, this car is launch control. Mainly, like, almost 100% of DSG cars have launch control. It's crazy. If you guys want to see me do launch control, go check out my other video, Mississippi Gulf Coast Cruise um, launch control. That was, like, awesome. We actually had somebody, like, at the racetrack, like, tell us we couldn't do it. And I was like, Dude, this is a racetrack like what are you talking about <laughs> anyways enough of that guy <laughs> uh, I can't get rid of it like that's why I need an addition to the garage like driveway <laughs> I wish I had a garage like I really do I'm actually looking at some places um, that might have a garage. I'm not sure yet. 
Um, that'd be very nice though. I'd probably have to keep this baby outside, put whatever's nicer in, inside, but it's all good. This car is paint protected. Um, it's got the paint protection film on it, so there's not much to worry about that. So really, overall, this car is just an absolute beast. Like, that's all I can say. Um, let me know if you guys like this type of video. Um, this is what I kind of plan on doing. I really want to uh, cover topics like this. We can talk about things like Formula One, Le Mans racing, uh, drag racing, circuit racing, anything. Just drop a comment and comment about what you want to see. Like, just put a topic like, I want to see this, I want to see that. Um, yeah, but I hope you guys like this video. Anyways, peace out till next time.